Hey, it's uh, Chris here today from Huckleone's Equipment. Uh, it's field trip day here with us. Uh, you'll see we're off-site, we're not in our normal surroundings. You'll see behind me, we don't have a Kubota. We actually have this very specialized one of two in Canada tree planters here. So it's a pretty big piece of equipment. Today's video, we're gonna be having a conversation with my good friend, uh, Jack, about his company, HRI. That's what we're doing here today. So let's jump right to it and talk with Jack. So I'd like to introduce uh, Jack McDonald here. So we've uh, been doing business for about uh, 10, 12 years. He's been in business for over 30 years and has planted nearly 500 million trees, maybe even over that. So Jack, can you kind of tell us about what HRI is and what they do? Yeah, as you said, I started about 30 years ago. Um, I was a planter myself in my youth. I was paying for university. Stars align, I started a company. Um, I'm the only owner. We plant roughly 25 to 30 million trees each year. And we do all scopes of silviculture. And silviculture is a type of forestry that manages the forest after the trees have, have been harvested. Most of our work is, is tree planting, as I said, but we also do other facets, like uh, preparing the ground for, for planting and or treating the trees after they've been planted or, or uh, data collecting. So again, just a, a, a full silviculture uh, business. How many employees do you have? Like I know in the winter it's it's a very small amount and then this time of year it's humongous. Yeah, in May and June we, we've had upwards of 600 uh, employees. This year we're about 380. Wow, so that's, <laughs> and then you said, I believe off camera you said what, five, five uh, camps throughout Ontario, is it? Yeah, we have five camps. Each of them have anywhere from uh, 50 to 120 people in each camp and they work all across Canada. We're in Alberta and New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, and most of our work here is in Ontario. Now let's jump to actually talking about what's behind us, because this is a pretty spectacular piece of equipment and I have no idea how it works or what it does, but it's it's awesome. Yeah, this is two years in the making. I, uh, I started the um, heavy equipment stuff probably about 15, 20 years ago, and it was importing a denier and disc trencher, and it was back in, 85 this thing was built and then we went to Sweden and found there was some brand new Bracky disc trenchers which were three rows which was really interesting to me because it just comes down to production man hours and fuel time with the two row so obviously 33 percent much quicker so the disc trencher basically is a is a tool that's used to uh, prepare the ground for for planting so that's where I started into the heavy equipment stuff and imported that and now I have uh, five of them and we are the first people that had those disc trenchers. So this is the next step in evolution. This is where we combine the disc trencher with actually physically planting the tree. I seen this in Sweden and we, the, the company called Plantma brought the equipment over for a prototype in New Brunswick. And between JD Irving and myself, we, we got to see it in action and they, both of us bought one. And uh, this is one of the first ones in Canada. So Jack, why, uh... Why does HRI do all this? Like, why do they plant? It comes down to the wood supply and demand. Everyone uses toilet paper. Everyone uses two by fours. That's the demand. In order to keep up with that kind of supply and demand, we need to re put the trees back in the ground. If we walk away from an area that's been harvested, then we'll, we would end up with a lot of softwood uh, return, meaning we would end up with mostly poplar, red maple, sprouts. That comes back naturally and fiercely. What we need to do is put back trees that are much harder to regenerate. So we put back a lot of pines, um, a lot of spruces, and, uh, and quite a bit of hardwood, mainly oak. One of the biggest things that I really focus on is innovation. So I really like to be innovative, again, bringing in those three, dis three row disc trenchers. Again, they were the first in North America. This machine here, again, first in North America. The technology behind this we're also trying to implement in a tree shovel. So people are going to be using their phones and then the, as, as we get into this, I can explain to you how this works and why it's planting a tree at, at that particular microsite. We're actually trying to implement that in physically planting so that when someone throws a shovel into the ground, they, that it's recorded as a tree and it just helps with the inventory all the way around. Okay, so now we've uh, jumped around to the front of the machine. As you explained to me, this is the, the forwarder part. This whole unit is made up of three different uh, pieces here. So I'm gonna let Jack start talking about this because he is the expert on it. And I'm just a guy along to learn more about it. So, so Jack, let's start at the front and work our way to the back. So this is a 
a Ponzi unit, Ponzi Buffalo. It comes from Sweden. It, it's been modified so there's no bunk to it, there's no crane to it. We just used the deck. The component of this, this machine itself is, is three parts. One is the actual forwarder, the mid section is a, is a disc trencher, and the very aft part is the planter. They are sold separately, and, but they work all together with the different components in the electrical series that we'll see inside. So the unique thing about this one, this is a 2025 model, it's the first year where they have a tier 5 engine which means they both have DEF and DPF emissions control on it. That's the largest difference from this year's model. They also have a fully integrated console where it's a full keyboard and screen display. So you can do most of your diagnostics yourself. And you were saying that this is generally speaking going the other way is what it's supposed to be going? Yeah, so normally in, the, in a harvesting atmosphere, this would be the back end of the machine because you'd be driving through the rows, picking up trees um, in front of you, which is actually the back, and laying them into your bunk. Oh, cool. So for this purpose, this will be the forward motion. So we'll see in the cab, most of the uh, instruments in the display are actually facing backwards, whereas our purpose is we had to put the displays facing forwards because our direction of travel is this way. And was it ordered that way, or is that how uh, like, uh, Ponzi it, did it over there? Or Yeah, so it was special to order. However, it, it came with still with the functions at the back, and the seat's reversible. So whatever direction you're traveling, when the seat's facing that way, then you just switch your seat back and it'll start heading okay, the, the cool. same way. And it obviously has forward and reverse as well. Yeah, nice. Um, so how much horsepower is in that engine under there? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be, I would guess, <laughs> enough. enough, yeah. Enough. That's, I'm gonna that's guess, a great question. I'm gonna guess, that's a great uh, answer for yeah. it, enough. So. That's a great answer. Don't just leave it at that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got enough. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's a four-wheel drive and everything like that. Eight-wheel yeah. drive, yes. Eight-wheel drive, yes, yeah. that's correct. There's a lot of wheels on there. So eight-wheel drive, they're weighted, are they? Or they no, these the... aren't weighted like tractor tires. Okay. So they're they're empty, and we put chains on them, so they'll be both chained, and the footprint on this would be very minimal. We okay. try to keep so... it as light as possible. Okay. As opposed to, uh, yeah, because we're not pulling anything, or we're just trying to float across the ground. Okay, so this is the uh, cabin, and we're actually facing backwards. Because as normally during functioning, this is where the logger would be picking up his logs using the hand controls here. Fully functional display helps with uh, diagnose the machine, keypad, air conditioning, mouse pad, and all the functions for the crane are these, which we don't use. This is the steering button control and steering on my left. This is the control for the mid midi flex there in the middle, which is the disc trencher. And as I said before, I can, if I'm traveling this way and I turn around, then I would be using the same foot pedals, but would be traveling this direction. And all the displays on this side are the instruments that we use to connect all the, all the systems, including the multiflex, the prime mover, and the uh, tree planter itself. Okay, we move now to component two here. Uh, Jack's gonna tell us all about it. It looks fancy and complicated, and he's gonna tell us how it works. Yeah, so this is what we commonly call a disc trencher. The disc trencher is a part of the component that when you're moving over the ground, it chews up the ground and moves all the surface debris and exposes the A layer of soil. With this machine, it has sensors in terms of the disc angle. It has sensors for the up down. It has down pressure so that when we hit more duffy areas with more debris or, or more coarse material, the, the um, disc trencher can put down pressure on it. The disc also rotate, very similar to uh, a, a farm disc trencher, and the material gets tossed in underneath. Yeah, and then it's run, the hydraulics are, are coming from the prime mover. The it's all, is it all sensor run or do you like, is it, yep. uh, it tells it how, how much pressure it needs down there or what? Yeah, so it's all sensor run. So you set up the parameters for how deep do you want the trench, how wide do you want the trench, how much down pressure you want on the trench, and it, it, if it gets knocked out of place, so if this gets knocked for whatever reason, hits a big rock or stump, the computer will tell it to go back to its position oh, wow. of starting. So really, other than pushing a down button, it's all sensory done, and there's no, no complicated other than setting it up. 
And how, what, how much pressure can it put, you were saying? Off the yeah, the so the bar cylinder in here would put about 160 bar pressure in the cylinder. So there's not much that's going to stop it then? No. So, no. I could actually probably lift the back end of this machine with down pressure. Wow. Okay, now we've moved around to the component number three here, planting end of stuff. So, Jack, again, if you can kind of go over what we're going to be talking about out here, and then we're going to jump into the cab and then actually talk about the very planting end. Yeah, so unlike this trencher, this trencher has been around for 50 years. This guy's only been around for three or four years. The idea of this is that the disc trencher disturbs the soil, cleans all up, the tiles, the tires compress it, the soil, and then the actual planting arms plant it in, in, into the soil. So the main components of this is the tree storage and the operating area. Uh, and what's all underneath here? You said there's uh, an extra diesel tank and a water tank? Yeah, so one of the big issues that we have in forestry is, is access. So a lot of ground that we haven't been able to access, they use winter roads and, and get into the block and they harvest the wood out of the block. And then for us as civiculture foresters, to get a crew in there is either helicopter or Nodwell machines or other, other machines. And to prepare the ground, generally we can't get in there because the flotation of the machine is such that it's just going to sink. So the really unique thing about this is that this is one in and done. So it doesn't need to go in and out like the other machines. So the idea behind this machine is that we've got an extra fuel tank here and it's to supplement the fuel capacity of the machine so that it is able to work 16 to 18 hours. And we also have a water tank and a fully fridge and everything for the operators as well. So, yeah, again, so you, you had to customize this, the silver part here, you had to customize yeah, yourself, so right? Yeah, customize this is all, myself. This is all HRI right here. This is all HRI <laughs> in, <Perfect>. ingenuity. <laughs> and we're about to take a look at it. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so here we are in the cab, the business end of this machine, which is, again, new technology. This is where it's as simple as taking our trees from the storage, which is behind me, which can have a capacity of nearly 30,000 trees, and you take them out of the box, set the box here, and literally one by one, put them in the cups. This is also the main controls for this part of the implement, which is shared with the front, and both can control what's happening back here. Set of cameras so the person who's operating, driving forward can see, and also um, climate control. Yeah, so then basically you just take the trees individually, drop them in the bucket. It's a conveyor belt out to the end. This arm comes up. As it comes up, it activates the air and the water. And what happens is it goes down the chute, gets held in place by the air and water. And then eventually the teeth open up and then two arms come and crush it to make sure it's firm in place. Okay, so as I said, the trees will come out the conveyor belt, which is up higher. This arm goes right up to that the opening there and once it hits that opening it activates the drop drop goes into this stainless steel spout it gets down into the teeth right here which makes the the uh, indentation and then what happens is when these be pulled back when they're being pulled back the the tree is being held in place by air and water and then the two shoes on the outside come out and and, and crush the ground to make sure it's nice and firm in place so a big thing is a lot of people ask me, well, how does it know to plant a good tree? Because obviously we live in Canada and there's a bit of a thing called the Canadian Shield. What that does is these have sensors in the ram that's held up in here. So when we get a large spike, that means that it's know that it's either hit a rock or a stone or a stump. So and then it won't discharge the tree. It will actually jump up, move a foot away and try again. And it'll continue that process until it hits the ideal pressure in that cylinder. And again, same thing, if you're hitting really soft, loomy soil, it'll have the exact same kind of repercussion as that, oops, too soft, it's not going to plant a tree, it'll jump another foot and then plant the tree. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of, a, it kind of thinks itself. So how yeah. does the operator up here talk to the operator at the back? Like, how does that all mesh All done together? by uh, headsets. We have headsets that they wear. Oh yeah, it's in cameras and all that kind of jazz. And that's right. And all, everybody sees what's going on from front to back and yes, that's all work right. in unison. Because it's, you said three people operate the whole thing? A minimum of two. Yeah. Uh, typically, we're going to have for the first little bit, someone actually walking behind the machine, just checking for quality to ensure that we're nailing, nailing our quality. So, and so, like, uh, how many trees in a day will this thing plant optimally? So. We've seen it plant about 3,000 trees an hour. Oh wow. So, yeah. yeah, so it can get up to 30,000 is our hope. 
Oh, per day, yeah. Yeah, so, per day. Yeah. So how come HRI chose this machine? What was the, the thinking behind that for the savings end of it? Yeah, so the big thing for us is just staying competitive and innovative. Offering and proving to our clients that we are in the civil culture business and we really want to keep excelling at innovation. And this is a huge step in innovation. Um, one of the big advantages for this machine is, is if we're focusing on winter roads and, and access issues, this machine gets to go in once and done and back out as opposed to flying people in and having them plant the trees and, and the huge cost that's involved in that, this is a much more economical benefit to, the, to our clients. And that's why we're seeing more coming to Canada. So. That's right. I, and again, they've, I know the company that sold me the components of this, they've pre-ordered in hopes that I'm, I'm going to be purchasing more and hopefully it performs the way I anticipate it. Perfect. Well, let's talk about performance. Let's uh, see this machine in action. Okay. Uh, so that brings the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, hearing a lot about this machine and how it operated and watching it work out there. It's pretty awesome to see. Uh, there's a lot going on there. And I really want to thank uh, Jack here today from HRI. Thanks, I appreciate Brian. it, everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, so where can we see this machine? We're going to be starting in Timmins. We got, uh, we're hoping to, to cap off nearly 2 million trees by the end of the, end of the year. Well, that's pretty awesome. So it's going out there. You'll probably never see it this big and shiny again. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe. If you have any comments, please down below. Thank you.